Um, so Phil's been doing some really great work um, on systemd support um, in, uh, in GLib. And uh, he's going to be covering that in his talk. Um, there's been some really good new API. So I'm sure we'll hear all about it. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm Philip. I'm from Collabora. I've been doing this work on behalf of them, but really it's all upstream, so nobody cares. Um, so I'm yeah, I've been working on structured logging in GLib, which is an extension of and partial replacement of the venerable glog API, which everyone has been using since forever for outputting strings somewhere. Um, so what's new? Structured logging. Um, it's basically what you get in journal D. It is instead of having a string which you're outputting to std out or std out, you have a set of key value fields and you can have one or more of those. One of them will be a message, one will be your log domain, but you can have whatever you like in that set. Message IDs are also new. They are also a journal D concept where you can have some unique ID which is linked with the particular location in your code that you're outputting your log message from, so you can easily grep through the journal to find instances of that, that message. The writer function is a replacement for log handlers, if anybody knows about those. I'll go into more detail about this in a minute, but it's sort of the core of the changes. Um, journal D support, I've mentioned a bit more in detail. It means we can now detect whether you're logging to the journal, whether your stood out and stood out has been redirected to the journal socket, um, and indeed whether the journal D is available. We've got colored console output, which I think is probably the most important change. Um, <laughs> context pointers, which means that you can do more stuff in your writer function, or like your, your log handler, um, without having to refer to global variables, which you used to have to do. Um, and sort of one of the key concept changes is that we now encourage people to log everything unconditionally so that the, your log filtering can be done in your viewer, like GNOME logs, rather than having to rerun your program with some esoteric environment variable that says log harder and try and reproduce whatever bug you were reproducing in the first place, which can sometimes be quite hard. Um, I should briefly, briefly say what was wrong with the old stuff that I haven't covered already. Log handlers were a mess because you could have more than one of them. Every library would install its own log handler to do something to its log messages. Maybe it would also do something to somebody else's log messages. Who knows? Um, the interaction between log domains and log levels was a bit undefined. Um, and overall, there was little chance for customizability. So you could do some things in a log handler, but then other things were implemented directly in glib, and you couldn't override them, like fatal handling or aborting on certain things. Um, there was some global states that one library could set that then others would not have any control over or they could fight over, like whether particular things were fatal or not. And then it all tied into gtest expect message, which some people may have used, um, which allows you in your unit tests to check that the code emits some message at some point, which you can give a regex for, except that it only allows you to check for these messages in one specific order, and you can't check for optional messages or repeats or things that might appear in different orders due to threading or timing issues, um, which made unit testing that kind of code absolutely impossible. So the new, the new world order allows this and it had no colored console output. Um, so yeah, as I've said, structured logging, the core idea there is that you have a load of key value pairs rather than a formatted string, um, which means you can delay the string formatting as long as you like. You could maybe even not do it if you want a fast path. And it means you can give lots more data. You can give all sorts of application-specific data by adding some namespaced keys to this set of fields, which will then appear in your journal, and you can do things with them. So this is an example of some output in journal D. Um, normally, if you use journal CTL, you'll see a very condensed version of this. I've used the verbose argument to, so you can see all of the fields here. So we've got um, hostname, priority, transports. People are presumably familiar with journal D, um, but like it's obvious the message is there. And then there's loads of metadata about the process that came up with this message. Um, the performance of the new code is potentially better than the old glog API. It depends how you use it. So 
if you use printf style formatting, obviously you're going to have to pay the price for string formatting. Um, if you're outputting to stood out, then you're going to have to pay the price for string formatting. But if you are using the full structured log API, which I'll show you in a bit, and you're not doing any printf formatting, then you get a zero copy path all the way through to the journal socket. Um, it uses some stack allocations, and if you use more than 16 key value pairs, then you start doing heap allocations. But there is a fast path there, which there wasn't before. Um, locking is the same story as before. So there's one lock and three private data accesses, which we could probably improve a bit, but um, it's no worse. We've got a new macro for debugging. So if you've ever tried to do debug printfs, you've probably written something like this quite a lot, um, which basically prints the location in the code you're in and some message or timestamp or whatever. And it's a bit of a pain to do. We now have this. You can write that everywhere you like, and it'll basically print that. It's a minor improvement. Um, so how do you port to the new code? It's quite easy. This is an example of some old code including glib, and then writing a message. To make that new, you do this. You define glog use structured, and gmessage magically becomes something different, but with the same API. Um, glog use structured must be defined before you include glib, so you'll probably want to define it in your CPP flags. But um, just for the purpose of this example, it's a hash define. So all of the old style API, like gmessage, gdebug, gint, gwarning, ginfo, they will use new structured logging stuff under the hood, which means that they'll pass through the file name, line number, and function name that they are in to the structured log API. So you get that for free in the journal. Um, but if you want something more powerful, then you use glog structured, which is a new function. And it basically allows you to specify a load of key value fields, whatever you like. And then a message, which if you put it at the end, you can use printf formatting with the final set of arguments to the var args. Um, so this message has a message field, which is standard. Message ID, which is sort of journal D style. You have to generate one of those and put it in as a constant string. And then it's got a custom field here in the middle, which is presumably important to the author of this application. If you want to do something even more powerful, you can use like the fully featured turbo version, which is glog structured array, which allows you to pass in a set of glog fields, um, which means you can avoid the var args and the printf passing and use the zero copy path. Um, and this is basically the same message as before. But you can also pass, here we're passing a state object, which is of length of zero. So that's not being treated as a null terminated string. It's some state that you can pass through to your writer function. Um, yeah, I'll come on to the demonstration in a minute. Um, so writer functions. It's probably easier if I show you some code for this. The idea is that maybe if I show you the API. We have glog set writer func, which is the replacement for the log handler functions, um, g log set handler or whatever it was. Um, the idea here is that instead of having a log handler per domain or per library or whatever, you have one, one, exactly one writer function, which is set in the application, not in a library. So that means the application controls the policy of what gets logged, where, why, how many times, whatever. Um, where it's printed to, how it's formatted, and the libraries don't get a say in this at all. So please don't start using this function in your library. We provide a couple of default implementations of a writer function. So the one that glib uses by default is glog writer default, which will send things to the journal if it's available, and if not, it'll print them out to std out or std er. Um, and it'll do much the same string formatting as you had previously with the old implementation. Glog writer journal D is what it uses to print to the journal. Glog writer standard streams is what it uses to print stood out and stood out. So you can take the implementation of glog writer default, which is here, and basically re implement it yourself with a different policy for what goes where. So if you had a really complicated application, 
corporate thing with some servers somewhere and you wanted to say send all the log messages to a server for statistics or debugging or evil malicious purposes or whatever you could write your own log writer function which does that plus also prints to the journal or uh, whatever it's it's a lot more flexible than the previous system which you either used it and um took the benefits and downsides of it, or you re-implemented everything and never used glog at all. Um, yeah, so the, the policy is basically that. Uh, what else have we got? The formatting function is available, so if you need to format things in the same style as what glib uses, that's that function. Um, and there's various other utility functions available, which just make it easier to implement your own writer function. Um, so I guess I could give a demo. I have very rapidly and hackily ported Polkit from using glog to using the new stuff. Um, and I'm now going to run it on my machine <laughs> and hopefully nothing will explode. There we go. Um, so the log output looks much the same as before, except that if we now look at the journal, which I'm going to print out with verbose output, uh, and what am I searching for? Acquired the name. It's now printing to the journal. And you can see that it's doing this the new style way because it says the transport is via the journal rather than via stood out and stood out. Um, and you can see we've got the glib domain in there, which wasn't there before, and a message ID, which you couldn't do before. So that works. And I'm now going to stop that before it breaks my system. That's it, really. Any questions? Yes, Alison. How are message IDs managed? You generate them manually, and you put them in as a string. Do you have any ideas? Ideas. I've got plenty of ideas. About message IDs, or what? Yeah, is there any way that we could make this a little more automatic? Not really. Because if you make it depend on anything contextual, like the line of code that you're in or the file or the function then that could all change when you don't want the message ID to change so I think it's generally better to just generate them you can generate them using what is it journal CTL uh, what was that Leonard the last one new ID 128 yeah Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, you could even you can you could even do it automatically without adding needing a keystroke for it. That would be cool. Any more questions? Hello. Mm-hmm. That would be nice, yes. <laughs> yeah, there's a field for error number, isn't there? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that would be a good idea. I'll take a look at that later. Um, one thing to note is that if you're adding custom fields to your log output, you need to namespace them. Um, or will be very sad and confused. Um, so glib uses glib underscore for all its namespacing. Are there any more questions? Thoughts? Proposals? I think the old log handler functions didn't go so well in G-object introspection bindings, but do the log writer functions? Good question. Um, Probably not, because glog structured uses var args in a very weird way, and glog structured array, uh, that might work. That's an array of glog field objects, uh, structs. No, it doesn't? Uh, log structured array can be introspected, but you cannot use it because uh, the, what's it, uh, the stack allocated glog field array 
isn't introspectable. You cannot actually build one from most uh, right language bindings. I guess we need to add some kind of introspectable wrapper for that lot then. Cool. I'll put that on the to-do list. Any more work that I need to do? <laughs> yeah? Um, what's the deprecation path for the old log RP? Don't define glog use structured. Just use it as before. Um, there is no deprecation path for it so far because as far as I'm aware, there's no plan to deprecate or replace glib2. So okay. it's stable forever. Okay. Have I just committed to something that I shouldn't commit to? <laughs> it's stable for as long as I know, yeah. Cool. Um, do you actually speak the, the system native protocol yourself, the logging protocol, or do you use um, like the API that people provide? So I did want to claim the dubious honor of being the first person to link glib to libsystemd, but unfortunately, um, whilst I was on holiday, Matthias fixed that. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we just speak to a socket. There is no no systemd linking going on yet. Uh, one thing that the journal can do is that you can uh, um, put you put huge blobs in it. Do you like and and because that doesn't fit in a, a AF Unix datagram anymore, there's fallback with MFTs and things like that. Do you bother with that at all? I don't think we do yet, do we, Matthias? I mean, you might not need to, but. From the last time I looked through the code, I didn't see anything like that. Um, but I didn't actually write that bit of code, so I guess it could be added. I mean, the glog field struct is basically pointer plus length, so it's anything up to G size. Okay. What? What about them? <laughs> you can, you're welcome to. I'm not going to do that. Why do we need QR codes? Right. 